So many times when you're designing a computer, you want to use a logic analyzer if you have an issue. In this uh, example, what I'm going to do is try to reverse engineer this device, uh, reverse engineer a program using a logic analyzer. And it comes in handy for doing that also. So what I have, I have an 8031 microcontroller here. And I have um, an HP 1630D logic analyzer. This is an older logic analyzer. This processor runs, uh, has a frame time about 1 megahertz, where the 1630D logic analyzer has a 25 megahertz uh, state capability. So what I have, I have uh, pod 0 and pod 1. They're connected to the address bus. It's a 16-bit address bus. It goes from like A0, A1 through A15. So I have 0, pod 0 uh, on A0 to A7 and pod 1 on A8 to A15. And I put pod 4 on the data bus. So the data bus is only 8 bits. It starts at D0 through D7. And I'm using the J clock. So I have the J clock set to this uh, there's a discrete coming out of the 8031 called, uh, it's, it's a complement PSEN, so that's like the program store enable. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, the, the two ROMs are here. So I have a little program in this ROM, in this user ROM, and uh, I want to reverse engineer it. I want to try to get the code out. Uh, uh, of the system, you know, if let's say I didn't have any listings or I didn't know what the code was, using this method I could get reverse engineer it and figure out what the code is inside this ROM. So uh, it's a way, kind of, of a way to read the ROM by running the computer. It's also a good way to check to verify your program got installed properly and that the processor is working properly. So anyway, we're going to go about uh, doing that, uh, looking at the setup of the 1630D. And I also have a, a computer here uh, where I'm using TerraTerm to communicate with this 8031. So the 8031 has a monitor program, and you could see that uh, over here with TerraTerm. Um, if I hit the end command, if I push an end, that's the communications using the RST32 through TerraTerm that I could talk to the processor. So what I'm going to do is set up the logic analyzer for you. What I first have to do is power it up. So I'm going to push the power button here to turn it on. And you can hear the fan come on. It uh, takes a little time for it to come up. So what we're going to do is set this up. Uh, it's kind of uh, arbitrary uh, how you set this up. This has uh, 43 uh, state channels, and there's uh, I only need three of the pods. There's pod zero, pod one, pod two, three, and four. I'm only going to be using pod zero, one, and four. Um, I have other logic analyzers that are more advanced, and we'll go uh, and compare some of them. But right now, we're going to use this old retro 1630D logic analyzer. They're very cheap to come by these days because uh, nobody really wants these. Or, sort of obsolete. So anyway, the first thing we have to do uh, is, uh, in this system, is just power it up and then we want to hit the format button here and set a few things up here. So uh, so what I want to do is, um, when you see these up and down arrows, I don't know if you could see that or not, that means that there's uh, uh, activity going on. So we're going to kind of separate the address and data bus. So our address bus is on pod 0 and pod 1. And um, I'm going to, uh, uh, hopefully you could see that. I want to also show the buttons here when I push them so you'll know how to use this. So one thing, I have the J clock hook up and I have it as an up arrow. So it's going to trigger off of that. So this is that it's actually the output enable of the uh, ROM. So I want to reverse engineer this so I can bring the code back. So the first thing to do is, uh, is to scroll down here and I'm going to uh, make this the address bus. So A, we'll just keep it as A for the address bus. And I want to come over here and I want to kind of don't care the, uh, the data bus. So I do that by hitting this next button and make those asterisks and the points. And I want to make all these in the points because we're not using pod 3 and we're not using pod 2. 
Okay, so that does that. So this will make A the address bus for pod 1 and pod 0. Okay, so now I want to go back here and go back to the label. Now I'm going to hit an insert here. So I'm going to call this D for data. So I'll just put a D there. And I want to... I don't want bit 8. I only have uh, 8 bits here. So I'm going to hit... Um, Asterisk, 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 asterisk. So that's eight, the eight bits that I have connected. Okay. So if I if I let this run, I'm going to let it run uh, free. So uh, without capturing anything, I'm going to let that run now. And uh, you'll see, you know, there's data. There's a, a loop, a polling loop that's used. Um, and this is... Uh, in the monitor program right now. So I want to trigger off a specific program I have. It's at uh, 0800 hexadecimal. So I could run it and then stop it. And you could actually see the code, like this is the address and the data. So it's an 8-bit uh, processor, so it's 8-bit data. So that comes in handy. Like if I looked at the code listing on the machine language, I would see at 0793, a 30, and a 98. So this is how I could reverse engineer the program. So what I could do is put it into a disassembler and get assembly listing out of it to figure out exactly what this processor is doing. Now I want to trigger off a particular program that I have that, uh, and I'm going to use uh, the address over here. So when it hits 800, that's when I'm going to um, trigger off of it. So what I have to do is I hit uh, trace to do that, to set that up on this uh, logic analyzer. So I push the trace button. So I just want a single um, rather than continuous. So I hit uh, this next to go to single. Then I want to move the cursor down and I want to uh, trigger off a certain address. Um, and this is good for, you know, sometimes when you have an issue with your Computer design, it's a good way to go in and try to troubleshoot it. If you can't figure out any other way, uh, this is how, how we do it in uh, software engineering. So I'm going to hit uh, next. So, so I have this little A here. So I'm going to go down and I want to trigger off of uh, 800. So I'm going to push 0800. So when the address of 800 is uh, hit, uh, when I run this program, it'll give me the, the code back. So I'm going to hit run now. So now it's waiting for um, this program to run. So um, right now I'm not hitting anything in 800, but I'm going to run um, a little command. It's called the J command on this microcontroller that's going to execute this little program. What the little program does, it writes, uh, I, believe, I believe it just writes zero into the internal RAM from location 30 to uh, to to uh, 7f uh, that's like the uh, internal static RAM scratch pad RAM that's using this processor so let me I'm gonna hit the J command right now one two three hit so I pushed it and nothing happens here so why is that oh okay I see my error I had 88 uh, zero and I want eight. Uh, these keys uh, bounce a little bit. It's such an old uh, analyzer, so I want to make sure um, it's 800, not 8800. So that's why I didn't uh, trigger the first time. So I'm going to press zero, eight, zero. Okay, it's definitely eight zero zero zero. Yeah, sometimes the eights and the zeros look the same. So so I'm going to hit um, run now to to set it up. And uh, yeah, I'll go back to format. And I'm gonna hit run. So it's wait. It's waiting uh, to see address 800. So I'm gonna go run this again and hit J. One, two, three, enter. Okay, so now it ran. Yeah, I had the wrong uh, address before. So now you could like roll. Uh, you could kind of scroll like it triggered at. Um, I think I believe this analyzer will hold 1,024 uh, records. So I could see now, I could see the code here now. So I have uh, yeah, 800, this is 79, is in the data, 
801 is 30, 802 is 74. So I can see it goes, um, this program goes all the way from, uh, you can see it goes from uh, 8, then, then it skips and it jumps to A. But the one, the one thing I see sometimes is you get these doubles. So I'm going to go down, uh, let's see, for example, the doubles. Uh, okay, so you see two 80Bs there, and it's the same uh, data. And sometimes you get that. I believe there's like little glitches or things happening. The way the pro uh, microcontroller works, I'm not too sure. You get double sometimes, but that's okay. You just delete one of those, and, and uh, when you disassemble it, if I could uh, store this data someplace, uh, this ha does have a G... Uh, it has an interface. Uh, I trip, uh, it's called uh, GHPIB or GPIB that I could download to uh, another computer. And uh, they didn't have. Um, this was before they had uh, this uh, floppy disk that you could put in these things to get the data. So, so anyway, I have a double there, and I have a. Uh, if I go down here, I have a double here too, and. ADC, there's two F7s there if you could see it. So anyway, this is a loop that repeats itself and we're gonna go through this program a little bit. And um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll down here a little bit and we'll take some pictures of this to uh, compare it against the code listing. So anyway, the next step is to compare it against the code listing. So let me uh, go back to the, the top here and I'm going to take a photo of it and so we can um, compare compare it against the code listing so we'll do that real soon so this logic analyzer is a bit noisy so I'm going to power it down okay so anyway this is um the Terraterm program that I'm using to communicate with the um, microcontroller here and I just wanted to show you the command uh, that I typed it was called the J command here and when I type it it runs very fast and what it what it is all it does is it sets all these uh, memory locations to zero here so it's a very small little program uh, that we're going to take a look at so um, so anyway, um, let's let's get the program up here. So we'll uh, try to compare the code listing against what we got on the logic analyzer. So so well, uh, let's go through a little bit what this program does. So what it what it does is it sets uh, the internal memory to value zero zero. The internal memory it starts at uh, hexadecimal location thirty to seven f. So what it does is uh, the first part of the program is that it um, loads uh, the start value which is uh, 30 into register 1 and then it sets the value to register A and then it um, so the, the starting value is, thir uh, is 30 so the value is 0 so uh, so it puts the value in register A so this is an indirect um, so A is set to, to 0 so uh, which is the value, uh, so it's at R1, which is 30. So it's going to move into, uh, the first command is, is going to load into address 30, uh, 0. So anyway, there's a little loop here, and what it does is that it, uh, it, it, it wants to do it all up to 7F. So 7F is the end, so, so this is a conditional jump not equal. So if we're not equal to, um, so right now our register 1 is set to 30, so so if so this end is set to 7f so if it's not equal it goes to label 2 which increments register 1 to the next value then there's a jump around this loop and it does it over and over again now when it does hit 7f uh it it uh, go it goes uh, it goes uh to um it it goes to label 2 uh when when uh, when it's not equal when it's not equal it goes to 2 but when it hits 7F, it passes through. So then it goes to label 3 and ends the program. So anyway, we could see here that um, the first instruction is 79. So we have 879. And the second uh, instruction is 30 at 801. So we have a 30. 
So uh, at 80, eight, eight, oh, um, that's at 803. 804 is, is uh, F7. So we could see at 804 we have an F7. And 805 is a sloop now. So the loop is um, uh, 805. We have B9. So there's a B9. Now something could happen. Sometimes you get doubles here. So the thing to do is just ignore the doubles. So you get a B9 and then a 7F and an O2. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, fetch and execute part of the computer. So so here it's going to, um, so our first instruction, it's not going to be equal. So it's it's going to be, uh, it's going to jump to label 2, which is at um, uh, o is 08 OA. So here... So uh, we see this O2 here, and then it does it does read the next instruction. There's like um, kind of like a prefetch for the next instruction. So the next instruction here was at uh, 808, which is 80. So you can see 808 is 80, and then but then but then it does jump to uh, 80A. So here's 80A, which is label two, which has instruction nine. So that increments register one, and then the next instruction is the jump back to label one again. So if you look at uh, 80B, so that has a double in there. It's got the 80 in there, and you can see the 80 in here. And uh, then it goes uh, F7, which is the jump back to label one, which is 804. So so it does have um, so it goes back there, but it does do like you do see a little bit of this O2. It's got like a pre kind of like a prefetch in it and then it does jump back and this program was successful so I wanted to show you that how that worked and so this is a good way to reverse engineer if you don't know what the code is and you don't want to read the ROM you could uh, put a logic analyzer on the processor and figure out what the program's doing so you could take this now and put it in this assembler which will bring this code back so I just wanted to show you that and how to use this logic analyzer uh, in, a, in the state mode. It also has, um, there's two modes, there's timing and state. So this is how to use it in a state way. State means that you have uh, an external clock that you could trigger off of. And timing means that uh, it just uh, uses the internal clock inside the uh, logic analyzer normally. Anyway, just wanted to show you an example of that and hope to show you uh, some other logic analyzers maybe with the same example to see how they all work. Well, anyway, thanks for watching this now. Bye now.